And policy analyst Colin Zawinke and medical doctor Ima Amoafu joins us on the word now for experts' view on this. Good to have you, um, have both of you on the word now. Let me start with you, um, Dr. Ima. When you look at where we are now, with the cases we're seeing in Beijing, the cases we're seeing in Germany, um, even in some states in the US, are we now um, at the second wave in some countries? I think it's very difficult to say at this point. I think the graph of numbers of cases was never going to be linear. It was never going to be a straight line. Um, so as lockdown measures reduce in various countries, we were always going to see some increase in the number of cases. But we don't know at the moment if this truly is the second peak that we've been told to be aware of all this time. Some things we do know is with other viruses, such as flu, we see peaks in the winter. So, for example, in the UK, we're on guard because we know that as it gets towards November time, we may see a second peak then. But at the moment, um, it, small increases in the number of cases, it's almost impossible to say whether this truly is the second the peak that we've, came after we've been expecting until we get confirmation of higher numbers. Right, I'm staying with you, um, Dr. Emma. We know that right now we've seen several, um, several in several countries where the public health there or the health sector there has been overstretched. We're also seeing cases where doctors themselves or medical workers are also overstretched. So if we're, if we're going to have a second wave, um, what impact will this have on the health sector? I think it could have a huge impact. I think what we saw in certain countries, such as Italy, for example, was they were hit very hard, very quickly, and their, um, their intensive care units in particular couldn't cope with those sorts of numbers. Now, I can only really speak with confidence about the UK, because that's where I work. I work in London um, in a large teaching hospital. So I know for us, we've had lots of capacity. We've had lots of extra ventilators and machines and we've had contingency plans in place should we have this true second peak and when it should come. However, we don't know with confidence whether other countries or even other hospitals within the UK and some of the smaller cities have made these contingency plans. So what we do know we need to do is to avoid what happened the first time in that we need to have plans. So for example, we, in London, we've had the Nightingale Hospital, which was built from the ground up in an old event center All right. which has capacity Emma, for let me, let me, um, let, let's bring in Colin Zwinke. So let's talk the economic uh, aspect of this. We're already seeing that a lot of, we're seeing the limping economies in several countries. And then we're also looking at income inequality being a big issue here. And if we're going to, if we're having a second wave of this infection, um, are we going to have recession just about immediately some countries are already in recession how big is this going to be for the economy in terms of impact if we listen very attentively to uh, experts like uh, emma and um, of course uh, data scientists as well as uh, economists uh, when you bring these uh, three broad uh, constituencies together i think uh, the conclusion you will draw indeed is that isn't the restrictions, isn't quite uh, the problem. The problem is an attempt to return back to the norms. Now, like Emma told us, the capacity, as long as the capacity is there, and the level of preparedness has now been heightened in terms of more expertise uh, built up over the past uh, when this uh, you know, virus came to us, it therefore means that the uh, medical experts are much more prepared now than they were earlier on. So what that means is that when there is a second wave, they will be able to more comfortably accommodate than you know try and error that perhaps the first uh, wave. Now what that means is that the impact economically is going to be much less because the situation will be much more under control. Now, I do not have any reason to believe that when there is a second wave, as long as people start beginning to feel well, everything is back to normal now. Let's go back to let's, uh, you know, throw the conflict uh, to the wind. I think um, the economic impact is not going to be uh, that significant.
Moody's analytics have a contrary view on that. They say that a second wave will cause double deep recession. Um, if that were to be true, um, what sectors should we begin to pay attention to at this moment? The sectors of concern, of course, are the, um, the everyday sector, you know, the sectors where, for example, you mentioned um, uh, tourism, okay? Tourism is so seriously hit because, of course, um, the airspace is not open. So that means essentially that the hotels, the restaurants, and the cafes, you know, will not be open. And ah, also the small, um, you know, businesses, the hairdressers, and so on. The restriction is going to affect the market. It doesn't look like when there is a second wave that uh, people like the hairdressers are going to be there uh, not that big because with uh, the lessons we have learned in terms of professionality uh, and uh, social distancing and all of that, I don't believe that uh, there will be a need to lock down the economy to that uh, extent. Then, of course, the total system is going to be uh, affected. Now, I am not uh, as pessimistic as others who feel that uh, a second wave is going to cause the depression here. And then, to the end um, uh, uh, the COVID uh, 19, the US economy from the employment rate was 4.4%. That was sometimes. And then, um, with the um, economy, we can, let, let's bring in um, Dr. Emma Ian. Um, Dr. Emma, a lot of countries, or almost every country, has eased the restrictions in their country. And then we're also seeing that getting a vaccine is we're months away from getting a vaccine. So what should we be doing in the interim to mitigate the impact of the second wave? Yes. Well, I think we should be doing what we were always told to do. So simple things such as good hand hygiene is always going to be the first most important step. So that's washing your hands more often than usual washing them with soap and washing for at least 20 seconds. Other than that, carrying hand sanitizer and using those as we can. Second of all, almost all countries now are advocating the use of face masks. Now, face masks are useful because they protect you from spreading what you may or may not have to others. So face masks will work if everybody adheres to those guidelines. So mass use of face masks should hopefully protect us from some cases. And even though lockdown restrictions have been eased, we can, of course, be sensible. So be um, alert to any symptoms that may come up. If you do get symptoms, you still need to quarantine for two weeks, staying away from those who are unwell and vulnerable if you, if you feel it so well. And just being all around sensible will help to mitigate and prevent, a, you know, a second peak. Policy analyst Colin Zawenke and medical doctor Emma Amwafo, many thanks to the both of you for sharing your perspective with us.